Adepte de la Grande Toile, bonjour Dans notre épisode consacré au second volet de la saga Alien, nous évoquions le début de carrière de James Cameron chez Roger Corman sur des films comme La Galaxie de la Terreur et sur Piranha 2, les tueurs volants. Pour aller un peu plus loin, je vous propose en bonus un extrait du making-of de La Galaxie de la Terreur, Tales from the Lumberyard, dans lequel il est question des nombreux talents de Cameron, mais aussi de son tempérament parfois un brin excessif. Pour nous et dans nos budgets, les effets spéciaux étaient compliqués, étaient expensifs, et heureusement, nous avons eu Jim Cameron. Uh, Jim really was brilliant. Jim a commencé comme juste un assistant dans notre département de spéciaux, a évolué très rapidement jusqu'à ce qu'il devienne le chef de la department spéciaux. Puis il a devenu designer de notre production, puis le chef de la production, and also sec head of production design, I should say, and second unit director. He directed second unit on uh, Galaxy of Terror for us. Jim was essentially, I think, the man that was running the studio, creatively, certainly. Because when Roger Corman would come down to the set, or come down to the studio, he seemed to always go to Jim Cameron's office. Jim Cameron had really started to get a sense of who he was and what he could do and I think he had a lot to say in Galaxy of Terror about what things needed to be and how they needed to be done be, you know beyond the traditional role of a production designer I think he not only had a vision for the film but he also knew what that film needed to be he was you knew even then that James Cameron was going to be huge because he didn't he, he wasn't like oh well I'll do this I'll do that he was always working Jim was sort of the creative design force of Planet of Horrors he was the man who was designing the sets in charge of making sure the monsters were designed properly the wardrobe I mean everything design wise was was a Jim Cameron creation, or at least Jim signed off on it. It all went through Jim Cameron, even the lighting in some cases. He uh, designed the costumes, designed the throwing crystals, a couple other weapon things. Jim had these incredible ideas, I mean stuff that wasn't in the script that made it into the movie that he would shoot. Um, you know, the, um, the whole thing with Sig, Sid Haig and the, and the crystal traveling up his arm. You know, was done, we did that on the spur of the moment. Somewhere, maybe a third of the way into it, after live action was done or as live action was winding down, they needed a lot more coverage. And Jim Cameron raised his hand and said, I could do a second unit. And he directed all of our death scenes. Well, as, as uh, many people know, or is, is revealed in the movie, Damien succumbs to a maggot. Uh, the interesting thing is, is when they originally shot that scene, they couldn't get the maggots to move. You know, when there's an original shot of the maggots and they're moving and then it grows, well, that wasn't happening. The maggots were just sitting there. So James Cameron got the idea to shock the maggots. And that's how they, were, that's how they started squirming. He was amazing, he was always coming in with his, again, Roger Corman finding the most brilliant minds. Who would have thought to shock the maggots? But Jim was also, Um, probably one of the most opinionated people I'd ever met up to that point, and probably since then, too. Jim was very smug at the time, and uh, I remember uh, the first time I met him, uh, well, we almost got in a physical fist fight, which I can see is very easy to do. And I was on the set, and the Carpenters played a prank on me. And uh, it was early in the morning, and there was a spaceship uh, scene that they had just uh, painted this table and I didn't know that they painted it. And I said, how'd you guys get that shine on there? Wow, it's really good. Oh, we buffed it and buffed it all night. Why don't you run your hand across it? Oh, okay, yeah, it's really smooth. Oh, hey, great, so the paint came off on my hand. So Jim comes up to me and they're all laughing, they're having a good time and uh, there are a lot of pranks on the set. But uh, he goes over and says, who did this? And I said, I did. And he goes, mister, you're barred from my set. And I said, you know, it's not your set. You know, it's the directors and the producers. And then he goes, blah, 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 words, you know, and it's just, I'm ready to draw back. He's ready to draw back. Cameron was always doing, uh, like, karate high kicks and stuff like that. So I thought, oh, he's going to karate him. Plus, at the time, Jim wore heels about that tall, too. So, you know, one of those heels planted in you, man, of those platform shoes. And then the carpenters ran over and just said, look, look, this guy's nuts. Okay, leave him alone. <laughs> it's like, go over here and go, you know, just go do your thing. That night, he, we went to Norm's. And he was there having, I'll never forget this, the spaghetti dinner special. He's eating spaghetti like this and he's like 
watching me, like I, like I ruined his movie. He was, you know, pussycat to me, so um, I, you know, where I hear things, it's, it is what it is. You know, the man's amazing at what he does, and he takes what the avenue is that he takes to get there. But I did have a crush on Galen Hurd who did show up there, and uh, I made a deal with her, if I lost 50 pounds, would you go out with me? And she goes, yeah, sure. So I worked out and everything. I didn't know later on she ended up, you know, dating Jim Cameron. So uh, we were at a screening of Terminator, and Gail was amazed that I lost all this weight. And I said, yeah, you remember when I asked you to, like, uh, you know, we go out and all that? And so Jim just turns around and gives me the mad dog stare. It's like, well, I was just joking. <laughs> you know, <laughs> anyway. And in fact, I think if you look at Aliens, Aliens looks a lot like Galaxy of Terror because it's the same effects crew, essentially. You didn't see things being tested and tried out in that film, and they came from Jim. Could have been one of the hardest working people I've ever seen in my 30 years in the business. As a matter of fact, when I was talking with him on Titanic, he said, I just did what I was doing for you, but I did it bigger. I had more money. <laughs>